Thanks for joining me for this edition of the Church Security Answer Man. I want to talk to you about a kind of a follow-up to two weeks ago when we talked about contacts in the parking lot, those kind of things, some survival strategies. I want to add to that today, and we're going to get focused on a little bit more of where to stand, that kind of thing, which we touched on a little bit. And then we're going to get a little bit more in depth on stances when we're dealing with difficult or dangerous people uh, in our in our church security duties. So I want to start back where we touched on a little bit. And this is really about giving you a little bit of an edge. You know, we don't want to be face to face with difficult people if we can help it at all. We want to be giving them a little bit of distance and we want to put barriers between us if we can. A person who is contemplating attacking us or fighting with us will be a little bit more challenged in their thinking and their planning if there is something between you and them. So we want to be thinking about that, putting something between them and us. And we talked about the 21 foot rule uh, in that session and about how people can close in on us and be 21 feet away from us and still close in on us before we can take action to defend ourselves. And, and, and in fact, there's some studies that say that's kind of maybe even old school now, and it may be even a greater distance, more like 28 or 30 feet. So we want to try to put barriers in between us to hinder that stuff just a little bit. So, uh, so we talk about here, we look at stances when dealing with people. And again, this crosses over a little bit here, what we talked about the other day, but we're going to go into some other good stuff here coming up. So don't leave yet. So here we talk about anything, any kind of an object, a truck, a car, a couch, a counter, a table. And we're talking about using the corner of it, putting yourself just a little bit of barrier in there so that uh, you can have a little bit of uh, a little bit of a buffer, if you will, before they can just easily just attack you. There's something in between the two of you. So uh, and 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 then we go on to look at, you know, the hood of a car, uh, the hood of a truck, the bed of a truck. We just we're basically what we're doing is, is, you know, we're going up to talk to them, but we're not going on the same side of an object. And that's what I kind of want to impress upon you today a little bit more is, Take the opposite side. You know, if you've got a truck or a car, we don't have to go up on the same exact side as them. In fact, honestly, it might make them feel a little bit more comfortable if they're just an innocent person. If we go on the opposite side, if they're not a dangerous or difficult person and we just walk down the opposite side, it gives us a little bit of barrier. Nobody likes encroachment into their space. But then when we're talking about a difficult or a dangerous person, maybe somebody who wants to attack you. Now we're talking about creating a barrier where you, you know, they can't just run and attack you or jump and attack you. So there's something in the way which will give them thought for, you know, maybe not doing that. So we want to look at that, get them to think more and not have an easy strategy to attack you. And we look here at, you know, the, what might be your church lobby. And we just look at the objects here that are, you know, that are chairs and counters and things like that, that we can um, put ourselves on the other side. And we can call people over to a counter. Hey, could you step over here with me? You know, those kind of things. We might be able to do some of that and then stand on the opposite side of that. And we can even kind of lean on it, making it look like we need a little rest break or we're just, you know, relaxing a little bit. That can help ease their mind as well. But it puts barriers between the two of us. And you see a couch here. You might have a couch in the lobby. And we see a couch here where we can do the same kind of thing where we're on one side. I've got you as the uh, X and I've got the P as the problem person. And so, you know, we can get that problem person on the other side and go down the opposite side of the couch. We don't have to be standing with them face to face. And I would propose to you again, there's many good reasons for doing that. So there's many benefits for both of you for doing that. If they're a good person, they're not contemplating attack, it gives them a little bit of space. If they are contemplating attack, then it gives them a little bit of a barrier or gives you a little bit of a barrier, uh, if you will. So, And then we look at all kinds of other things as well. We look at, you know, out in the parking lot, we're looking at the cars again. There might be electrical boxes near where they're standing. There might be a fence. 
you know, and you can see there, you know, 50 yards from you on one side of the fence, maybe you can go down the other side of the fence and walk all the way down to them on the opposite side of the fence. And again, it just gives you a little bit of a barrier. Bushes, use bushes between the two of you, picnic tables. And I don't know, you know, what does your church parking lot look like? Uh, what can you put in between the two of you? And what do you have out there, whether it's cars or trucks or bushes or picnic tables, all those kind of things? What can you use as a barrier between the two of you? And then we talk about a good stance. What does a good stance look like? You know, and really it's, uh, you know, we're talking about flat footed versus having a, a slight uh, offset in your stance. So if we stand with our feet together, we just stand with our feet together when we're talking to someone. And, uh, you know, that doesn't give us a lot of a platform versus if you separate your feet just a little bit. And, it, you know, if, you draw, if you're talking to somebody and you drop back one foot drastically, that can look like you're contemplating some sort of an action. So I encourage you to get to where you uh, uh, maybe as you're coming up to somebody, you plant your back foot and then step forward just a little bit with that front foot before you get to them or as you're coming up to them. So give yourself a little bit of an offset. Uh, something like this to where you're very comfortable and balanced. You don't want to be standing, talking to somebody uh, flat-footed, if you will. So very bad position to be in. Very easy to push someone over. In fact, I go about 300 pounds, and in my live classes, I used to demonstrate this all the time, that somebody could push me over that was much smaller than I would, could push me over with basically a finger if I was standing flat footed and they could do everything they could with two hands to try to push me over if I had those feet offset just a little bit. So very important for us to look at those kind of things. So, and then we look at that good stance. We look at using your hands, you know, get your hands out in front of you, especially if you're dealing with a difficult person or things don't seem to be going just right. You want to be getting those hands out in front of you and talking with those hands just a little bit more. Use those hands. By the way, palms uh, subconsciously uh, uh, conveys a open, more agreeable type message. So if you, um, if you use your hands to talk with them in your palms, there's a lot of advantage to that uh, un uh, subconsciously. But also get your hands in front of you in case you have to defend yourself and deflect some kind of punch or something like that. So talking with your hands is a great tool for us to use. I would also suggest most people looking for that nonverbal communication, and it's very important to them. I would also, as you listen to them, nod your head yes. That's a great sign of agreement. Most people are going to make eye contact with you, you know, uh, as they make eye contact uh, that's a sign that, th that they're important to you, that you're listening. So many good things. And there are a few people from certain cultures that don't make eye contact, especially with the opposite gender or figures of authority. And we want to respect that. But most people are going to make that eye contact with you. And they're going to really appreciate that being given back to them. And if you're trying to employ some active listening skills or some of those kind of things to help uh, deflate them just a little bit or allow them to vent. Making good eye contact is very important. And if it's appropriate, you know, if they're very sad or very angry, you don't want to put a smile on your face. But if it's appropriate, a little smile is also good to show some lightness along with that agreement and the palms of those hands. Uh, very good. So, uh, and again, I strongly recommend that you're willing to employ those hands out in front of you because that's a good thing for us to do for many reasons, for your self-defense, but also for your uh, showing that you're open, good communication skills, uh, those kinds of things. So, uh, and, and you know, and then when you're dealing with your stances and interaction with people, you know, uh, what tools do you have and are you able to use them? Are you willing to use them? Are you willing to throw something at someone if they start to come at you? You know, if they start to lunge at you, do you have something that you can throw at them? 
Do you keep a little notebook with you? Do you keep a little flashlight with you? Something along those lines that you can throw at them. And I don't know what each of you carries with you. But, you know, maybe even your radio. Some of you have radios. Maybe, you know, are you willing to throw that radio at somebody? And you got to think of these things in your mind ahead of time. You got to make those decisions ahead of time because otherwise, when things go wrong, if you have to make this stuff up, then it's not going to be easy for you. So I suggest that you think about it ahead of time. What do I have with me or what can I start to carry with me if I go out to contact somebody in the parking lot? You know, do I carry a notebook with me so that I can write some stuff down or just so I can carry it so I can throw it at somebody or book or or I don't know what that might be. Maybe your coffee as we're going to talk about here in a moment. So be thinking of those kind of things that you can use as a shocking measure. Throw it at somebody to maybe towards their face to deflect them as they start to come at you. And that gives you a little bit of extra time to escape or to employ your tactics to uh, defend yourself. And, you know, and I strongly recommend, I can't tell you how many people I see that will turn their back on someone, you know, turn and walk away and still be within a 10, 15 foot range from them and turn and walk away from them with their back to them. I strongly recommend that you're walking away and you're still making eye contact with them as you're, you know, closing your conversation, as you're saying goodbye, whatever that looks like for you, that you're actually uh, uh, keeping your face, your eyes on them as you walk away and get yourself 20, 25, 30 feet away before you begin to walk away. And then maybe still looking out of the corner of your eye as you walk away or looking in the reflection of a window at the church, depending on where you're at, to make sure that you can still get some visual, that it's okay, and that everything is okay in that situation. And 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 kind of lastly, you know, what else can you use to defend yourself? What do you have with you? Hey, I, you know, I've got a couple guys that sometimes I feel like maybe they're more into their coffee than doing other things, but then they've got a good defense tool with them. You know, I've seen that when I have visited other churches and those kind of things. But, you know, really, you could defend yourself with that hot coffee. So it's actually not a bad idea to have that with you. But I want you to imagine if someone were to attack you in the lobby, in the parking lot somewhere, somebody all of a sudden comes at you that you're trying to talk with or trying to uh, de-escalate them a bit and they come at you. What could you use to defend yourself? You know, your arms, your legs, some hot coffee that you're carrying, a book. Maybe you have some paperwork with you that you throw in their face to kind of get them to have to close their eyes, that kind of thing, and uh, get them to look away to give you a few extra seconds or else to get you an opportunity to try to take control of them. So books, paper, hot coffee, whatever that is. And then the fingers. I don't want you to forget just how great of a tool jabbing somebody in the eyes is. Now, it better be a serious situation before you're doing that, where you're having to defend yourself from an attack or serious situation. But don't forget, you know, I almost think they almost probably have to have a weapon or something or be bigger than you and you're afraid of attack and afraid of serious injuries. But don't forget, and that's probably just my cautious side, but I want you to remember you have these tools with us. Most all of us have these two tools right here with us and can use those to defend ourselves. We don't think about it. In fact, it's painful when we do think about it. Some of you might, your eyes might be watering right now just thinking about it. But that is a great tool to defend yourself if you are under attack. And again, most all of us have that. So so I'm encouraging you today, you know, those are the things I want to encourage you with to think about. I want to keep talking about scenarios. I want you thinking, what if this happens? What am I going to do? If I'm out in this corner of the parking lot, what am I going to do? If I'm here in the lobby and somebody comes in and starts to attack me, what am I going to do? I want you thinking about those things ahead of time because don't forget, we've got the limbic portion of the brain and the limbic process that will freeze for a second when it realizes something's going wrong. And when you come out of that freeze, you need a plan. Otherwise, now you're spending a few more seconds making it up as you go. And that's not good if you're under attack. So I want you thinking of these scenarios from somebody running at you to somebody 
pulling out a stick and running at you to uh, uh, just different scenarios and in different locations at your church, how would you defend yourself? Would you grab something? How would you defend yourself uh, in in those uh, kind of situations? So very important. Giving your brain materials is very, very important. So uh, thank you for being here. Thanks for looking at this stuff. And I want to encourage you to uh, uh, look at this video clip right here and uh, take a look at this. This adds more to this discussion and I think it's very important for us to continue that discussion.